Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Company of Heroes 2. We are a little bit sad, uh, unfortunately. We are not in the May Balance preview, despite my efforts to get replays. This is just a regular build, so it's kind of what you're used to from playing, but, you know, there's a... Uh, there isn't the new cool stuff. For example, on this map, snipers <laughs> against US is, is is one of the most broken things ever. Totally. So hopefully we won't see that. Uh, we are seeing an MG and a Grenadier. Often snipers as the very first unit is actually pretty safe. Yeah, it is. It's not really a big problem. You kind of just camp up half of the map and then uh, take some free manpower bleed. Our players for today will be Spanda as our Wehrmacht. And Fortune as the US, who actually has Airborne Company locked in, so bit of a mad dog if I uh, do say so myself. And other than that, we are in Lungaraskaya, so yeah, one of the old classic maps, very big, very open, very bad VP placement. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, I think this VP should be here, and this VP should be here. Yes. Then you can actually triple cap yeah. your opponent, it'll be a lot more contested, it wouldn't be a, a, you know, a huge camp fest. Man, D how long did it take you to fix Lungra's Kaya machine? It sounded like five seconds. Did it take you five seconds to fix Lungra's Kaya? So. Well, the, the best bit is, remember yeah. when there was even worse? The VP was... It was, it was even it was down yeah, more. It was, it was, worse, it was like over yeah, here or something. Worse. So they've been gradually working on it. And other than that, it looks like we actually have a nice flank coming out here of Fortune though. We'll be surrounding it with two squads. MG not going in the garrison was a little bit risky there. Generally, you want to put that inside of the house. Oh, he actually gets it though. It wasn't a completed flank. Uh, really didn't run straight in. Probably because of the contesting Grenadier squad here. And it's probably going to be to the advantage of the MG42 if it manages to back away inside the garrison. This is very smart play from Spander because this house was obviously not going to work. The riflemen were there. And, and if you went backwards, the riflemen could have chased them and maybe just forced it off. So... Great positioning here. It is quite weak, though. It may want to back away after this engagement, but for now, it will be doing a fair bit of damage against the rifles. We're kind of preventing it from staying in the house. Yeah, at least buying a little bit of time for Fortune to come up the left-hand side with those rare echelon that he's currently doing. I have a spanner. Good play using the Grenadiers in support of that MG42 to ensure that easy flakes can't come out, which is certainly a possibility if you go for a very early MG42. I don't know why he stayed there for so long. He had lost a model and now he's really low, so even when reinforcing, this rifle squad's going to be at a very bad spot unless he gets the ambo, which yeah. you can't really get until you get a light vehicle first. I mean, so. he was holding, holding up three squads and at the moment has 50% map control, the, the munitions, the fuel, and the VP. So assuming he can get squads out on the field in nice positions soon, it'll work out. But he shouldn't go aggressive. This squad should uh, play defensive And it means now, now that he's just he's investing squads one at a time, and it's not going to work against a supported mm -hmm. Wehrmacht army. Looks like he will be able to heal because the hedge is actually blocking off the MG and the second Gren squad. So trading one for one pretty well. Uh, great player using this hedge for his... his if, if he was in this, this brush, for example, the MG could have actually started firing. Or these squads starting to run out. As the machine pointed out, however, they will be on low health. Maybe they need to have an ambulance out this early. And it's actually a four rifleman start here from Fortune. Yeah, probably uh, going for a captain. Yeah, probably going for a captain is the, the most likely scenario. You generally see either three riflemen into that lieutenant uh, to have that additional combat effective unit on the field uh, or four rifles into the captain, which is a, a safe build, and I don't have a problem with that. It's a fantastic map for the AA half-track, so going LT would be pretty safe, where a lot of the time it can be a bit iffy because dealing with a scout car is, is hard, even, even with a M15, because it's not very mobile. Pops the volley fire here though. Remember, volley fire actually gives you a received accuracy penalty. So you, you take damage quicker. So that, it really wasn't much to gain from there by doing that volley fire. It actually meant he got forced off a little bit quicker. And blue munitions, which is never nice. Spadner uh, managing to gear cap both of the fuel and the VP. Early VP changes can be really important in Lungras uh, because of the VP placement and the tendency for this map to drag out to the late game in fights over that central VP. So getting an, an early lead of even 50 VPs uh, really can have an impact. And we have to remember another reason that Captain Tech is good. You don't get mortars. This is not my balance preview. No, there's no mortars, yeah. Having the pack yeah. how, he's, how he's amazing, especially as a south, because you have that, that hedge. It's a pretty safe spot that you can fire through, so 
I would say it's another reason why the south is just really unbalanced compared to the north. Not only is the cutoff easier to defend, the points are closer, this hedge gives you more safety. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, I'm not a big fan of this map for a you know, balance reason and for, for VP reason. I do like the fact that it's open though. I kind of wish more maps were open, but yeah, it's not the best. Not the greatest. So, uh, Spanda actually going for a half track. It's something we haven't seen for a while. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not often you see that, and I think the reason why is it gives him a lot of field presence, which then allows him to take a cutoff and actually hold it, because unless you have a really good MG placement, but even here it's pretty easy to flank the MG, that you can just get forced off uh, eventually. It's so close to your opponent's base, they're going to have reinforcing squads. Whereas with a half track, you can actually stay in the field, especially if you want to invest in the med kits yeah. to keep a squad healed up, but. Those are very expensive and not very good. Seems like a good choice. I'm, I'm a fan of the half truck, especially given the playstyle. Uh, Spanda not deciding to go into snipers. Still that possibility, but he hasn't yet. Uh, going for a Gren and MG heavy playstyle and engagement heavy as well. Uh, situations where a forward reinforcing half track will certainly help. However, we'll have to be careful of the, the captain that has come out, of course, with double bazooka in uh, retail co uh, and the, the Stuart coming out straight after here for Fortune. Yeah, so... Oh, what a mad dog, supervising. How do you know that someone is good at video games? Swag. They supervise their Stuart. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, the ultimate swag points there. So Stuart's yeah. on the field, gotta be careful. Oh no! Oh no! The flame half track! Oh no! So I gotta say, this wasn't a very good game sense here, because you gotta expect the light vehicle to come out, especially when he sees a captain. It looks like he will actually get the half track away. Uh, great play here by the Grens, but going in way too deep. Going in for the Faust was smart to, to force the Stuart away and prevent him from going after the half track, but he committed way too much to that. The moment the half track got away, he should have just retreated, but he tried to chase it down. Looks like he get, oh no. Nice. He gets the kill there in the end. Uh, so, yeah, when, when, when you're expecting a light vehicle, you really shouldn't extend like that unless he had a pack nearby, which he yeah. didn't, or a Telemine at least. Looks like we were supposed to have a Pyro squad go down at the same time. Oh, this is not man. looking for Spanda. Oh, the Stuart can just walk into the base. This is brutal. The MG's probably going to go down here as well, unless he can get some reinforcers, which I doubt. The Stuart should be able to take it out here. Easy. Oh, wow. That's three squads down for Spanda. The Stuart's on the hunt for the, the flame half track, but he's actually going the wrong way. Uh, it's good juke from Spanda going in the opposite direction. If there was a, a medic bunker, you could actually kill that pretty quickly. It's a great target to harass if you're in your enemy's base. He actually calls in the LMG Grenadier group. I have no idea why. That won't help him against the Stuart. Not at all, Machine. Not at all. It's nice to have an additional Gren with the LMG, but not against the Stuart. Uh, Stuart, this is free reign. It, it must free be. Rain. It must be for a Panzer Shrek, because he has enough munitions to go for a P Panzer Grenadier squad. But it, he could have built a pack. He could have built a squad of Pigra. This is an expensive call in. Five hundred manpower, mm -hmm. and he, he, he can't deal with the Stuart. Though, he does still have a lot of territory, and having the, the double munis points, it is giving him a lot of income, which will really help him out for his... his, uh, Grenadier LMGs yeah. and his Shreks. But it, he won't be able to hold this territory with a Stuart on the field. Building a squad of Pigrens now... I mean, yeah, he's gonna have Pigrens in, in a half-track, but... Okay. How fast does the Stuart take down the tier building? I guess it's starting to oh, chip right. down. Nice. There we go. The infantry it, it's very is cheap down. though, but uh, there's like 80 manpower and I think it's about 20 fuel. Or 15 fuel. Or maybe 10. I can't remember. I actually have no idea. Actually, I think it's only 10. Yeah, it's only 10 fuel. It's not yeah. much. It's, it's still a good tra good worth, worth doing. Yeah, for sure. If you, um, if, you have, if you have a bit of spare time for the Stuart and you don't want to go too aggressive and risk a Faust in this uh, instance, it's quite smart. But... Yeah, just bad game sense from some spander there. It's just when you you see four riflemen, you should look at that and go, okay, what's what's four riflemen gonna be? That the most of the time that is gonna mean captain into Stuart. That's the the standard build path for USF. And uh, especially once you see the captain, it's just like you should be aware of the Stuart coming out and you shouldn't go for that uh, flame upgrade on the on the half track. The reinforcing half track would have been fantastic, but flame not so much. Even the flame half track could have been okay, just depending on the position. He just went too deep. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. so causing them to sort of ranges as well does fortune here. Now the grenadier half track does go in, or rather the pigren half track. They actually sort of rifleman here with the AT grenade. Rifleman will come through though. Look, it may actually delay the AT grenade. 
Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It, it yeah. kills the model that was firing it, so it means the half track backs away. But lucky break there though from Spanda. Uh, and now there's going to be squads. They're so vulnerable out in the open against this Stuart. I still, I think this wasn't really the, the best play though. I think he would have had more success trying to force away individual squads because mm. even despite that, Spanda still has his fuel, still has the munitions. So losing that many squads didn't really do that much as far as territory, but certainly the manpower bleed. Wow, these reds are way too deep. Not gonna go for the Faust either. Could potentially drop another model for the Stuart shot. Okay, drops the back model though, so it should be fairly safe. And we do have a uh, lock in here from Fortune. Going heavy cavalry. Uh, so we will be seeing uh, a potential perching coming out here. Has access to rifle and field defenses, ranges. It's a solid choice. Yeah, once again, trying to poke away the Stuart. It's kind of a, it's a bit of a gimmicky pony, one trick pony. It, it, it works incredibly well if you surprise the Stuart and catch it out of position. But in an in an outright trade, it, you can get kited. The Stuart has the stun. It's, it's It can be a great play as, as kind of a, a crutch. But he, rev he, he went in for it when the Stuart wasn't out of position. And as a result, the Stuart kited away. There are riflemen there for the, for the snare. So I feel like... Spander kind of blew his shot there at actually getting the Stuart down and now he's invested so much manpower and fuel not only in the half track but also in this this uh, uh, well actually both half tracks the 250 and the whatever the other half tracks called 251 this I think. This is really well microed by Fortune. Kites the Stuart backwards directly into oh wow and the sm smoke as well here from Fortune beautifully played. Kites backwards to the Stuart gonna take a couple more Shrek shots though. Panzer Faust oh no no munitions available I don't know if he was actually within range though anyway, and now the riflemen are just going to be collapsing upon this MG with the Thompson Rangers annihilating it. That's going to be stolen for sure. Fortune is outplaying Spander through and through. This is a beautiful play. That was great. Kiting the Stuart back, uh, taking down the p runs. Now the Stuart's going to dive in after the flame half trick. That goes down. Uh, this is just brutal. This is a brutal game. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not, not a fair fight here. So with the flame half track, I, I think it's only good against garrisons because out in the open, just get a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. It, it's going to be pretty much just as effective. It's going to have a, be a bit easier to keep alive. It's more mobile. It's smaller. And oh, we it's... could see bundle here. No, Spanner doesn't have the munitions for it. I don't think you can cap when you're suppressed as well. No. Nice rifle nade though. That was um, from Spanner to prevent the cap just in case. But... So, look at Fortune. Is he going for his major tech? He certainly is. You, you don't always have to when you have a, a Pershing, but given how much of a fuel lead he has, he, he, he's only at six command points. So, oh, he's combined arms. This is great. Fortune taking absolutely full use of, uh, of his commander. I just love, love seeing the off-map smoke arty. It's so cheap, and we, we see players really underutilize it. Well, especially combined arms. In, so many players neglect that ability. Yeah. It's, it's not amazing, but it's certainly worth doing if you have the munis to spare. And it gave him just better trading. It gives you better infantry. It gives you, I think it's a better rate of fire on your tanks. So it's, uh, it's worth doing, and it, it allowed him to get that MG down as quickly as he did. Though it was... Wait, where is it? Where, where's the? Oh, is it stolen? Oh, no, it was, it was, oh, Spanda got it. Yeah, okay. Spanda got it back again. Yeah. So it is building a Stuart now. Is Span is your Spanda? However, the Stuart's already on the field and it's already vet two, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to keep the Stuart alive. But as long as he uses it defensively with, with Grenz nearby for Faust, he should be fine with it. Still has the sniper alive. Yeah. The sniper alive. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah. has the uh, the Panzer Shreks inside that half track, which is giving him. A lot of uh, defense against this Stuart. If it's an indirect by an M8 coming out, wow. <laughs> Interesting build here from Fortune, but I definitely don't hate it. Uh, there's no real uh, pressure against an M8 currently on the field. Uh, Fortune realizes his fuel advantage and his ability to go for that M8. Yes, the stun off on the half track. There are some Shreks firing. One of them actually misses those. This is going to be a dead half track, most likely. Stuart's already kiting away. But gets it down and he's already at, in a position where he can retreat away from the Shreks. And the M8 now has been revealed. The Pegrins! What are you doing, Pegrins? Oh, that is not where you're supposed to be. The m is actually going to go on the chase here. Can I get the point blank shot? Yeah, it has a minimum range though. And it, it, doesn't, does. hit, it doesn't hit moving targets. So 
particularly effective. This is a huge mistake here from Spanda. He went for the sniper when he should have just gone for a, a pack. Because even with that, that pig ran in the half track, it, it wasn't going to kill the Stuart. And again, he Fortune's had a fuel lead for quite some time. It was inevitable to expect a, a, a Sherman. I mean, you know, ne never mind this this M8. <laughs> this M8's just cruising around. I forget how fast they actually move. We, it's been a while since we've seen one this mobile. He was on a road as well. Yeah. And it was actually a double Faust out in the Stuart. Probably not the best option for Spander. Maybe one for sure, but it's just it seems like a waste of, of munitions blowing two, two Faust in that situation. You're not going to kill the Stuart. So now he's building a pack, but it's too late. The damage has been done. Has to retreat. Lost a lot of models. Lost his half drag. So in Company Heroes 2, you've got to always have the preemptive AT. And, and so far, Spander hasn't oh, been able to. Stuart in the middle actually going to be assaulted oh, by the Pegarins. Oh, no, it repairing it down. in the middle of the map with no... Vision in front of him, a big mistake there from Fortune. You could just drive behind the house or or just a bit further back or have a squad in front of you giving vision, but repairing like that is just not smart. You should never do that. So, Unless it's for a crew repair, to, yeah. a crew critical repair. Which it wasn't. So, no, yeah, yeah, it was just a regular repair. It's a regular one, so nicely played. Uh, Pigren's finally finding the mark and securing the kill onto the. Oh, this Lucky is Lucky D crew there, the MG yeah. gunner goes down. Nate's coming through as well here. Looks like he will be able to retreat. The suppression connects. So after doing a fair bit of bleed as well. Let's have the rear echelon. Looking towards our VPs now. 431 for Spanda. 381 for Fortune. So surprisingly, Fortune actually behind in VPs despite the pressure that he's had on. Look at this. Even mines down from from Fortune. As oh, a, as, lovely. As the M5 down on the road. I just hate seeing US players go this commander float munitions and either not build mines or use combined arms. Fortune, I think, is playing this exceptionally. He's clearly a league above Spander in terms of play, but he is, he's certainly playing a smart game. Now, the M8 is interesting. It's generally a pretty bad unit, mainly just because it's so weak. Yeah. It, it has 320 health, which is just not enough. It dies in two pack shots or two tank shots. It is actually getting a health buff. I think maybe even an AoE buff in the May preview. But in this situation, it's actually pretty good in Lungers because it has the long range where you can just safely poke away at your opponent. I don't know about double M8 though, Machine. I'm not sold on that. Yeah, it, Fortune. Spanders, I mean, yeah. Fortune's in, in, a, in an awkward spot where he doesn't really have much anti-tank. And Spander could have actually called in his Panzer IV command tank and he really should do that. There is... No, not even a steward, so all there is is a captain, but I love how Fortune is... What is he doing, Blake? He's preemptively building AT. Hey, and he's going to have that M1 expecting something of, of some kind. Uh, yeah, personally, I would have gone for a steward or a, or a Jackson, but I mean, even the Pershing, he's not actually that far away from his Pershing. That is true. Uh, looks like it will be double M8 into the Pershing, or at least that seems to be the plan. <gasps> Full fortune, though. He could run into some pop cap issues if he decides to do that, having reinforced his squads. We'll see how he goes. US um, late game US... having pop cap issues? Hey, if only there was a back. mechanic they could use I know, if to circumvent that problem. Yeah, I know. Yeah. If only, dude. If only. Oh. Maybe one day. So this is where he has to be careful. You have to be very careful with your micro for the M8s. Yeah. Only five kill or six kills between the yeah. two, so... And the P4 is here now, so this is perhaps going to be a little bit tricky. The health buff as well on the p and the pack. Moving up for the kill. Oh, here we go. It might stand to back away now. Oh! oh there's a wipe! And only because he retreated the p as well. Yeah. Okay, M1 is set up. This P4 is very durable here. It is the command tank which buffs itself. Oh, the M1 was moving. It was moving. It doesn't buff itself in the May preview, which is a great change. The Grenz could actually wipe this M1 here, but the rifle squads are moving in for the AT grenade. Still hasn't taken a shot. The crew just keeps getting dropped. There we go. Finally takes one shot. That could have been several against the command people. It, it definitely bounced, though. You yeah. need to pop the AP ammo. The M1's on its own. The penetration is lousy. Again, also being buffed in the preview Rens build. Rens could certainly go down here. That P4 buff keeping it alive. Command ba tank buff certainly saving that Grenadier squad. Oh, combined arms! Here we go. So the rifleman's going to have better... Again, I think it's accuracy. The M8's definitely having better rate of fire. 
<laughs> this is the first time I've seen a P4 forced off by uh, by M8. Oh man, the P4 hits a shot, but it's only the command because the rate of fire is insane here. <laughs> but the the MG does back away here. Rifle can actually connect, and there's the captain, captain here as, as well. well. Still, oh the buff is timed yeah. off, so the combined arms didn't really achieve that much. The MG actually survived, but now it's going to be the captain with the bazookas. And also, both of these pops the smoke down, oh! but it's not going to block Dead. off the captain here. He actually uses it behind it. Getting focused by the Grenadier squad. The P4, the P4 is moving the squads around, so the MGs weren't firing, but still, the captain gets away. Oh! Yeah, M8s, they miss the mark. The P4 right. survives barely. Oh, that was incredible. That was insane. Okay, the MS is going to need to be repaired. Otherwise, can you imagine taking shots into that base sector machine? So many squads. Well, down. it would end up in a, in the pack just killing their mates. Yeah, it they're, would. They're so yeah, weak. exactly. They are very low. Okay, a nice try by Spando with with the smoke. It would have been a very effective if he was only a bit further back, but he used it a little bit too far forward. Still well played though. Uh, throwing down the smoke bombs. At least he tried though. That, yeah, that's exactly. the important that's, thing. The main thing is that you're aware the smoke bombs are there and you're spending the munitions. So. Very intelligent. So, uh, that was intense, in a word. Look at these forward mines as well. Rifleman putting down a couple of them, flanking on the MG as well. Uh, he retreats it, actually. Off. I'm surprised you didn't just kind of soft retreat it there, because the Grens were there for support, building some sandbags, or at least attempting to, but getting focused by the, the Grenadiers there. So, M8 behind the hedge. Again, a very effective vantage point. This is just a fantastic engagement for uh, Fortune to take with the double M8. You can fire through the hedge. They're not invincible here. It is a dangerous day to be a support oh, weapon. The oh, pack. the Rangers are going to get it for sure. Yeah, there we'll we lose go. that one. And that's because of the setup here with the M8. So recurring that pack would be a big win because Fortune's current gap in his composition is the lack of anti-tank, which now is going to be made up, and he's still a bit far from his perch. Oh, only 16 pop cap? What? Isn't a Jackson like 10 or 12? Uh, 14! 14, 14 How is a Pershing 16 <laughs> pop cap when a Pershing is 14 <laughs> and a Sherman 12? What the hell? <laughs> I think King Tiger is like 19. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. A command tank is 12 and a Jackson is 16. And a command that tank is coming me. in, coming in hard against Dal is against a captain though and a pack oh, gun. No. This pit it's dead. It, it is. You can so actually dead. pop the smoke on both of these M8s here. Rear arm is exposed now as well. That rifle will get pinned there, so no nade, but it is gonna be an out of control P4. Not sure what killed in the end, but there was uh, no shortage. Of, of units to do so. Man, I don't even think Fortune's lost a squad. He is playing out of his mind in this game. The enemy is over These M8s are brutal. <laughs> this is insane. So Spanda, he's on 215 fuel for the moment. I'm not sure what he's going to pull out. But he does have the fuel for something. Not okay. a command tank. Yeah, he lost it. Tank. He doesn't even have his battle phase 2. So right, yeah. losing that P4 was a massive blow because it meant that he couldn't go for a, a P4 or a Stug because he has to rebuild the P4. And he needs to have a tank of some kind, but he can't afford to go for the tech. Okay, P4's been revealed now as well. Would it be nice to see that one go straight for the M8s and try and put some pressure on there? They haven't, though. The the P4's damage, though, the command P4 isn't that great, and with yeah. the smoke on, on these, these yeah, it's true M8s, smoke. Yeah. it wouldn't really be able to kill it. They're, they're, they're too mobile, so... Yeah, but... It's a very well-rounded composition from Fortune. Now he has the, the pack as well as the M1, the captain there as well. The option to go into Pershing once he saves up a bit more. Your mind uh, arms! I think we missed the sniper go down. It would have been quite a while ago. Uh, the M1s could have hit it at any time. Of course, not uh, killing him, but if they'd taken a little bit of rifle damage, it was a possibility. Yeah, this rate of fire oh. is actually incredible here with the combined arms. The MG gets decrewed. <laughs> and this barracks could actually be sniped as well by the barrage. So maybe we'll see a smoke for the capture on this, this MG. But the LMG Grens trying to trade out negative cover. Not going to work here. Okay, it looks like the... Do we... Oh there yeah, he's go. going There's for it. People. Yeah, it's actually going to dive in after the pack. The pack's trying to, to reface here. The M1 there as well. Hard to flank two AT guns. Good positioning as well because the M1 was pretty far behind. You can't really kite both of them or, or, or circle both of them when they're, t when they're together. Can you imagine the manpower separated. bleed from these two M8s? Yeah, it'd, it'd be incredible. 
We got, what, 12 kills and 16 kills. Yeah. Command tag's gonna be coming in now as well, but will it go oh, on there to the M8s? See, look at that. It doesn't, 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 no real damage. Not yeah. a threat. He steals the MG, doesn't even use the smoke. Good work. Fantastic play coming in from Fortune. I love this strat because yeah. the M8 rate of fire is, is quite scary. Though, the problem is Fortune doesn't have bars. Yeah. So, as, as impressive as it is, he could have had full bars by now, yeah. which would arguably be a bit better. But either way, it's still certainly worth him trying. Maybe yeah. kind of a late game situation. Yeah. It would be, the, this is the point where you would definitely uh, consider going for the weapon racks. Uh, winning the engagement's really hard. And look at the VPs though. 357 for Spanda and 381 for Fortune, despite Fortune's complete dominance in this game. Do you want to know a fun history fact? I would love to know a fun history so fact. So the, the British, I don't know about US, but certainly the British, they, they used to call the MGs the Spandaus. No, oh, really? Like an MG42 yeah. would be yeah. referred to as a Spandau. Not something that you uh, typically hear much in, in like pop culture, but it's, yeah, apparently. I'm intrigued by the fun fact. So whenever you say Spandau, I always think of Spandau. I follow. I follow. I also follow this Gren squad being wiped by the ins by the, the M8s. They're going to do it. They're, they're not great at hitting moving targets. No, they're yeah. really not. Whereas <laughs> a HE Sherman is. Yeah. Another reason why... HE Sherman's are generally a better choice, but actually loses oh, a rifle squad here. The first one. Is that his third P4? Uh, that's oh, the second one. Didn't go one. Down. The, second yeah, one. the second one didn't go down. Oh, it hasn't yet, so, yeah. So, hey, that, that rifleman squad just opened up pop cap for Fortune, though. <laughs> I love seeing an M8 pen. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty rare occurrence. So what is it? 13 kills and uh, 15, respectively. So what? One 16. one fun fact here about the combined arms. It's not really a fun fact. It's kind of a, a, a crappy fact. Is the the rate of fire bonus on combined arms? It it actually competes yeah. with the veterancy bonus. So what that means is if you have a vet three Pershing that has an insanely fast rate of fire and you pop combined arms, it actually makes the Pershing fire slower. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. And it's going to have a similar effect with the M8s. The Vet too, so they have the extra rate of fire. It's it's possibly still buffing it a little bit. But the fact that it doesn't, doesn't scale. So a, a Vet 2 M8 with combined arms doesn't actually fire any faster than a, a, a Vet 0 M8 with combined arms. Pretty quick reaction coming in there from Fortune. Actually manages to keep the M8 alive. Solid micro. It's just, it's not viable to get a triple cap on Lungras. It's just, it's not, not a thing you can do. When your opponent has two squads, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you, yeah, yeah. you could probably go for a triple cap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's worth trying if you can. It's hard to hold. You can, you can get it sneaky caps. But... Hey, Fortune has enough pop cap open up yeah, for a Yeah, there, there we go. Didn't even have to evac his M8s either. Yeah, I know. Uh, there we uh, go, double we M1, go. double AT guns yeah, rather. That, that will be, spell the end of the game for, for Spanda. It's all over, Red Rover. That'll do. I can actually firing on these AT guns, of the M8s, I mean. Yeah. Here comes the Pershing. Just in case the game wasn't over enough, yeah. the Pershing to seal the deal. Just fuel in time here for Fortune, who played a, a very... Very nice game. Love the plays. Oh, this Pershing shot. Oh, rough. It's about four bottle wide. That was a heat up round, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You get double faucet here, though. Still, playing at this stage is a little bit futile here. Yeah. <laughs> Just bunching all the squads up nicely for the Pershing main gun. There we go. Oh, There's there we go. More wipes. Now the M8's opening up on yeah. this this pack. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. And up. Oh, Spatter is actually out of squads. He has a pack. Yeah. Oh, he does too. We've got a pack. There we go. Okay. I spoke to Sue Machine. The game's still on. Can you win a game with a single oh, pack? Oh, the V3 sucks. Only, only extra range. Uh, it's the same that can be useful on some maps though. For I would, sure. I'd say it's certainly yeah. more useful for the M M8s rather than the, the Panzerwerfers in the uh, Katusha. Because I think they get the same. I think they get more uh, range, range at Vet 3, yeah. but then better accuracy and scatter at Vet 2. Or barrage and, and scatter. Because the M8s don't have that much range, so 
without ranging at a pack is actually very difficult, where then you have a lot more safety. Yeah. But it's, it's certainly not as good as accuracy and rate of fire, especially That's because the, the further you're firing, the more it will scatter. But anyway, so that was an interesting game. It was certainly one-sided and more one-sided than we, we normally do and, and more than we like, like to cast. But of course, we don't know this when we cast these games. We obviously have no idea going into them but still I think it was very entertaining just because Fortune played incredibly well mm -hmm. and I, I loved seeing this unorthodox strategy of using M8s and the combined arms I again I, I think this isn't going to be a viable strat for the most part and uh, you know uh, this was stronger than normal because not only was it on Lungerers but Spanda was so starved of, of vehicles where if, if you go double M8 you're normally just going to, I mean, even a single MA, you're normally just going to lose to a quick P4 or something like that. But it was certainly a good play with these M8s, and, and he realized that his opponent was so far behind that he really could put the pressure on. And it's it's probably even safer than going a Sherman, because if your opponent has two packs, it's incredibly easy to lose the Sherman. Yeah. You try and be aggressive with the Sherman, which, which you have to be to use them effectively, and then they can just get killed in two volleys of two packs. Mm. So, great play by Fortune. Uh, any last words? No, that covers just about everything, Machine. No, I love Fortune's play and just the, the, the use of... The full use of literally everything on the Commander. That was... That's what I enjoyed. Literally everything on the Commander he used. Even the Pershing. Even the Pershing. Even the Rangers. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Uh, and you, I do love seeing players make full use of everything they're able to make use of. Everything they have available to them. Uh, even Supervise. Even Supervise. Yeah, there you go. I we, saw, we saw literally everything when it comes to USF. Yeah. I don't know if we saw On Me, though. On, on Me actually gives an accuracy buff. Mm. So even if if the positioning isn't going to help, the damage buff or the accuracy buff can be useful. So fun fact there. But anyway, that'll wrap us up for now. Thank you for watching. If you do want to support us, as always, you can do so at Patreon. Since we are posting a video every day, it is our full-time job. And uh, we are relying upon the kind donations of our Patreon backers to do so. So if you want to help us live the dream and support the channel, that's the best way to do so. The links for that and 